Kessler starts now. Welcome into week nine of Football Frenzy Plus, brought to you by McCloskey Kessler. I am Eric Graver. He is Josh Rizek. We're in the final week of the regular season. We got playoffs coming up next week, and it was a big week of action, whether it was teams fighting for a share of a conference title, whether they were fighting for playoff eligibility or to clinch a postseason spot. Plenty going on, especially over at Harlem, where we had our game of the week, Josh. Yeah, seriously, big matchup there. Obviously, three seven and one teams in the Nick 10 between Hananiga, Belvedere North and Harlem where Belvedere North and Harlem are looking to share that Nick 10 title with Hananiga. And I mean, dude, it was just an electric game on both sides back and forth to the end. And I mean, we, we got to get into these highlights, man. So yeah. It was a crazy game. Two very talented teams in Hananiga did take care of business against Belvedere. You can catch those highlights and all of other, all of our other Nick 10 highlights in football frenzy. We'll have that on our website, WIFR.com. But let's revisit our game of the week. And Josh, go ahead and take it away with this Nick 10 showdown. Oh, yeah. Taking a look at Harlem's Husky Field hosting the Belvedere North Blue Thunder. Possible split title in the Nick 10 with both teams being 7 and 1. Blue Thunder up 6 to nothing in the first. And they make that 12 to nothing on the Xavier McElroy Tutty. And their fans are loving it. Next drive for the Huskies, though, Nate Johnson connects with junior Dwayne Broom for a much-needed first down. Johnson's look great this yeah, year. Yeah, but it puts him in field goal range for Angel Vasquez to knock down the 40-yard mm. field goal, making it a 12-3 game. And a quick B-North three and out gives Harlem the ball back. Who else other than Jamani Muhammad showing off the wheels for a big-time first down? And again, Muhammad, Nick 10, all-time rushing leader. There he is showing it off, punching it in for the touchdown. We've got a two-point ball game, 12 to 10. But then, right here, Belvedere North fumbles the ball. Nick Tapia can't hold on to it, and it's Isaiah Dosi Coleman with the recovery. And how about this pass back to the man himself, Dwayne Broom. We're seeing it on the Harlem side, Harlem side of the ball with Jamani Muhammad and Dwayne Broom moving the ball. We've got a 20-20 game, and who let the dogs out? Harlem has life. But then B North backs against the wall. They go to Xavier McElroy again for the 39 yard carry here as he's brought down inside the 15. And then B North has a third and 17. This is technically for the game at this point. Guess what? They throw it up to Nathan Alexander who makes the grab on the PI call and it helps B North win the game 34 to 20. Eric, I'm not sure if you've ever heard of, of the song Thunderstruck by ACDC, <laughs> but Thunderstruck tonight for Belvedere North as they split the Nick 10 title. What a season for B North. Can't wait to see what they do in the playoffs. They always give teams trouble. And we had a big game in the Big Northern as well. But before we get to that, let's double check the Nick 10 conference standings now as we have the regular season in the book. So it's B North and Hano at the top of the conference. Hano beating B North last week. That's where they got our Hananiga beating Belvedere North last week. That's where the Blue Thunder got their one loss. Harlem right behind them at 7-2. and two. Guilford with a great win over Boylan tonight to clinch the playoffs. They will be finding out who they play as well as everyone else tomorrow night at 8 p.m. And Boylan Freeport, they will have to wait and see if they're going to get a bid into the postseason. That's going to be coming up tomorrow night at 8 o'clock on our sister station, WSLN Channel 19.2. Of course, Josh, you'll have that covered in our 10 o'clock show oh, yeah. as well. Now let's head out to the Big Northern with Genoa Kingston at the home of the Crusaders now. Trying to become playoff eligible with a win over Lutheran. Nate Kleba airs this one out to Patrick Young. And Young doing the rest. He's got no one near him. 57 yards for the score. Cogs up 7 to nothing. Crusaders trying to respond now. Daniel Ballard with the ball now going to air this one out and it is an INT to the other quarterback Nate Kleba looks like a house call but just lost the ball in the end zone and that is key because Lutheran gets the ball back now and Ballard muscles his way into the end zone what a swing right there game tied at Huge seven swing. now in the first you know some people are out there gonna be calling it the worst rule in football that fumble into the back of the end zone but now we're tied and Kleba now connecting with 
Peyton Payer diving to make that grab. Cogs go up 14-7. What a play there. Crusaders tie the game on the ensuing kickoff, but it's GK coming away with the win. 29 to 14. How Ooh. about those Cogs? How about these big Northern games? Oregon looking for playoff eligibility with a fifth win tonight, hosting Athens in place of their scheduled game against Rockford Christian. Second quarter, Oregon up 22 to zero. Benny Olade airs it out. Josh Crandall for a 20 yard touchdown. Hawks go up 28 to zero. Oregon's defense is helping too. Cassius Crane looks for a receiver, and Avery, Avery Lewis gets the ball out of his hands for the fumble. Less than a minute left in the second. Crane loses the football again, this time by Jaden Barry. But Athens would get the ball back. Jumping to the third quarter, the Hawks keep scoring by this five-yard rush from Hunter Bartell and extends the lead to 42 to nothing. Oregon's offense and defense, they're clicking tonight. They are on one. Let's see it as they flew away with the victory to, of the score of 57 to 14 over Athens. Do not sleep on Oregon. They've had a lot of nice wins this year. Dixon rolling into Poplar Grove to face the North Boone Vikings early in the first. Already a 14-0 game. Brandon Slater hits J.J. Ford on the far sideline. Ford dives past the marker for the first down, but they would not score, so the Dukes take over. Landon Kanegi with a first down run, but the Dukes turn it over on downs far into Viking territory. Dixon on their next drive now. Colin Shaner hits Tyson Damon in stride and takes it a long way. The Dukes threatening again. Who else but Kanegi again takes the rock like he's been doing all year. He tumbles in for a 21 to nothing lead and Dixon shuts out the Vikings in a big 50 five to nothing win coming off big after that loss to byron and now we go over to byron as the tigers try to cap off their undefeated season with a date against the stillman valley cardinals on senior night 8 23 in the first byron gets the run game going on this 25 yard rush from the man himself Braden nolan he keeps rolling despite tacklers trying to get him down and then andrew talbert gives it to noel and makes his way into the end zone to make it seven nothing byron Cardinals looking to score with six minutes left. Ryan Reef scrambling, looking for Michael Orlando, but it's intercepted by Braden Knoll. 30 seconds left now. Byron scores again on the Talbert sneak on this keeper. Man, it is hard to stop that Byron offense, confusing all these defenses. And Byron's offense and defense help cap an undefeated season as they shut out the Vikings by a score of 43 to nothing after that super close game against Dixon last week. And Byron just getting right back to it. Another undefeated regular season for him. Let's check in on those big northern standings. Now, of course, Byron winning the conference at 9-0, Dixon at uh, eight and one just missing a conference title after that like you said that loss to Byron last week Rockford Lutheran clinching the playoffs Stillman Valley and Oregon will wait to hear their fate there and Genoa Kingston as well